close meeting to order. We hate, please have our clerk, Jesse Clark, call the roll. Thank you. Mayor Lamsad, are you present? I am present. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, present. Uh, we would need this, because this comes with the uh, that swoops off the existing one that came with the one. Councillor Branson? Present. Councillor Braybo? Present. Uh, and Councillor Cadigan, I don't see. I think he sent his regrets. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer. Present. Dylan Kosh, Director of Recreation and Facilities. Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works. Present. Barb Waldron, Director of Building and Planning, CBO. Present. Adele Arbor, Planner. Present. Bianca Jagisevic, Deputy Clerk. Present. Sarah Delamarter, Junior Planner. Present. Amber Novak, Legislative Support Coordinator, Executive Assistant to the CAO. Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services Clerk is present. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse. We can move on to item 1.3 of our agenda, which is land acknowledgement and moment of reflection. We respectfully acknowledge that Trent Lakes and Peterborough County are located on the Treaty 20 Michisaugee Territory and in the traditional territory of the Michisaugee and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty First Nation which include Alderville, Bozile, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nations. Trent Lake respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment to reflect on these principles and our duties and responsibilities as members of council. Thank you everyone for that moment. Okay, we can move on to item two of our agenda, which is dis disclosure of pecuniary interest. If anyone has a pecuniary interest on an item on the agenda, please disclose it now or any time during the meeting prior to discussing anything on the item you have an interest in. I am seeing no hands. We can move on to the item three of our agenda, which is the approval of the agenda. I think our clerk, Jesse Clerk, like to speak? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lamsad, I would just request that the uh, agenda be amended to move presentations um, after Section 5, Committees and Boards, and that Council approve the agenda as amended as our MP has uh, another engagement that she has to get to. Okay, so could I get a motion to that effect? See Councillor Franzen for the mover, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for the seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. The agenda is approved as amended. Okay, we can move on to item four of our agenda, which is the adoption of the minutes. We can do them all at once, or we can pull anyone out to speak to if we chose. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Motion to adopt all three sets of minutes. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We can move on to item five of our agenda. Item 5.1 is liaison reports and council boards and committees. Does anyone have to speak? Go ahead, Councillor Fran. Yep, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to uh, make a small report from Court the Conservation Authority. They recently did a climate change uh, survey. They had 170 respondents across the watershed. Uh, 32 of them were from Trent Lakes. Uh, the results of the survey, they're very concerned about climate change was 62%, 106 respondents. Moderately concerned, 18%, 32 respondents. Somewhat concerned, 2%, four respondents. Not concerned, 16%, 28 respondents. Climate change observation, Increase of evasive species, warmer water, more fleas and ticks, and more extreme weather, hotter summers and warmer winter, less snow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor Brandon. Yeah. Any other committees or board? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, through you, Mayor Lamson. Uh, a report from our library CEO. 
um, but we've been very busy and our circulation stats have returned to pre-COVID numbers. We had a record number of participants in, participants in our children's program as well, almost 100 more participants than 2019. And they're happy to have hosted the Trent Lakes Fire and Rescue, Peterborough County OPP, and Peterborough County uh, Paramedics. Uh, story time at both Cavendish and Buckhorn branches will continue throughout the summer. And they've had a number of people coming in uh, for support in photocopying and faxing services. Excellent. Thank, Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Anyone else have any boards or committees? Okay, I'm seeing none. We can move on to the advanced number eight of our agenda, which is Michelle Ferrari. Would you please feel free to make your presentation? And welcome. Can everyone hear me okay at home and online? And here we are. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a it's been a while for me to to get in here. When was uh, when were you all elected? It was October. Yeah. October. Well, well, we got that done. It's only August, so <laughs> that's in government fashion. Um, thank you all for having me. I, I'm Michelle Ferrari, member of Parliament for Peterborough Kawartha. Congratulations on your re-elections and new elections to all of you and to to you, Mayor and familiar faces. Um, I'm here to give a brief little overview of what uh, is happening at a federal level um, and then to open the floor to you um, to hear back from you of what messaging you need or answers you need from me to take back as well. So we're currently um, out of Parliament right now. We're going back in September. So I'm just going to go through uh, a few of the lists that we have of what's, what seems to be the key, the key uh, issues. So we'll start um, right now with what we're hearing a lot of is the cost of living. This is probably the number one issue I'm getting um, across the board. Um, food costs, obviously uh, gas, um, housing, cost of living is without a doubt the number one thing that's coming across um, my desk that I'm hearing from and obviously from constituents in Trent Lakes and in seniors. Um, took a phone call the other day from a senior who just um, just didn't understand how they were supposed to be able to live on on the amount of money that they are given when they don't have any extra income. So that's a, that is probably the number one issue that we're seeing in terms of what we're proposing. Obviously, we want to get that cost of living down, help make life more affordable for people. Housing, obviously another major issue um, and curious to see where things are at with you guys with, with Trent Lakes. Um, but it's a, a massive concern, um, just affordable housing. Um, Multi-generational homes seem to be more and more popular as opposed to single dwellings but that is the other key issue um under my tenure i'll be up in two years as of september 20th 2021 i was elected um, i have secured uh 40 million dollars from the federal government for peterborough in housing so um you know i really would love to work closely with you guys if, if there are projects that you're working on um, so that's been that's been very good. Um, have a good working relationship with uh, the then minister, but now we have a new minister, so I've opened that door with him as well. But um, he was very kind and considerate and said, you know, Michelle, we, they were applying for for funding for that, and uh, I was a little tenacious in, in ensuring that we got that, and they were they were very gracious, so that was great. Um, uh one of the big issues and I'll, I'll leave it actually till the end is is airbnb i'm hearing some things about that from from a lot of the municipalities so i'm just curious on your if you have any asks from a federal government perspective on where you sit with airbnbs long-term rentals um the invasive species uh trent severn waterway this is obviously a massive issue for trent lakes and we have our policy convention coming up for the conservative party of canada in september and uh, our EDA, which is our sort of local electoral district association, um, has been working with all other, um, um, quite a few, half a dozen or more uh, other EDAs across the country on an invasive species um, policy. So I know that it's a major issue here and we have that, we have the Trans Severn Waterway, which is a gem. So it's a major issue to a lot of the folks living here. So we are working on that as well. Um, seniors, I touched on that a little bit. It just, uh, it is a big issue. I will tell you, um, if you deal with me while I have this all electronically, um, we do have the New Horizons. I'm just going to send this to you. 
so this is the New Horizons program right now. Um, I'm just going to read it out. So the New Horizons is a federal grants and contributions program whose goal is to support projects that help seniors stay active and engaged in the community. Every year, organizations across Canada are invited to apply for the New Horizons Seniors Program funding through a call for proposals for community-based projects that empower seniors in their communities and contribute to improving their health and well-being. This year, the call for proposals opened up August 1st until September 14th. Eligibility requirements, application instructions, and additional information can be found at the link, which my team is happy to send you if you want to share it. it this has been a really beneficial program for a lot of, um, it helps a lot, and we've had the minister actually come to Peterborough at uh, Activity Haven in Peterborough. Um, it was a very um, much needed program to help seniors get, get together. So that's one thing that's uh, open. Obviously, there were lots of businesses as well that benefited from our Canada summer jobs, and I was really happy to, to connect with a lot of them in your region. Um, so that was, that was wonderful as well. And moving down the list here, um, and just a reminder, I guess, to anybody listening or watching or for your staff as well, um, our office is here to help uh, your constituents, um, our constituents together, you know, whether it's unemployment insurance, veterans affairs, immigration, passports, OAS, which is your Ontario uh, or your old age security, um, Canada pension plan. So our office, that, that is our job as an MP's office is to serve, um, you know, the constituents. So we've helped thousands and thousands of people. And it's really what our mandate is, is to serve and help. So if there's anything we can do, or if you're having that um, questions or you need that kind of help, please like sure that our office is there to, to help you. And, and that's what we want to do for people. So that's kind of a, a real quick overview of, of what um, I have on, on the burner. I obviously sit on the HUMA committee, which is um, human resources. We've actually done a, an emergency letter today that's going out in the media, calling the housing minister to come up and to come back to the committees uh, because there's a new housing minister to talk about what things are actually happening. I also sit on the status of women committee. Um, so we uh, just wrapped up a study on human trafficking. I don't think this is a major concern in Trent Lakes, but it is a it is a very big concern in the country. We uh, Peterborough is actually the, the third highest in the country. A lot of people don't know that. So we were working a lot on that. Um, and so in my file, for those who are interested, I'm the critic to families, children and social development. So I did a lot of work in this past year on Bill C-35, which actually quite a few of the residents of Trent Lakes have reached out to me personally because childcare is a massive issue. Um, securing childcare is a massive issue for a lot of people. So um, C-35 was around the $10 a day childcare, which is, great in theory. However, it's also created a, a lot of other unintended consequences of not being able to secure a space. So um, those are some of the big things. Um, there's been a lot of other things. Obviously, public safety is a is a big issue in the city of Peterborough. I'm curious to hear how you guys feel about it here at Trent Lakes. Um, the opioid crisis is a major concern across the country as well. So I would like to open it up to you um, to hear any feedback that you have um, and any questions that you may have for me. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Michelle. Does anyone on council have any questions of Michelle? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. That's for you, Mayor. Uh, thanks very much, Michelle, for your uh, update. Uh, you mentioned the base, uh, Peter would be the third highest in the country. Is that for human trafficking, or is there any specifics of that? Is there a breakdown of? I can send you this the the overhead. Um, it's Halifax, Thunder Bay, and Peterborough um, are the are the top three. It is the number one crime in the world. It is the fastest growing crime in the world. Um, I know you probably have some background with this counselor, so I'm sure you're probably pretty familiar with it. It's such a transient crime. Uh, it also recently got quite a bit of attention with uh, the movie, The Sound of Freedom, which was out. So a lot of people it kind of it, it kind of elevated it again. It just I just happened to be studying it. So it was uh, our, our committee had already been kind of doing this legwork. I think it's because of where we sit on the corridor of the 401 is one of the is one of the one big reasons. Um, Peterborough is also like an island, like we're our own kind of self-serving area, and it's just it's a very complicated crime, as you know too. It's extremely complicated. 
one of the best words or explanations I heard from one of the witnesses was the um, pimp, if you will, replaces uh, until the, the victim has that core need replaced, right? So it, does, it isn't always money. It, it can be love, it can be affection, it can be gifts. And it's, uh, there's some shocking statistics, right? The average age is 13 years old. So it's not as like cut and dry of what we think, I think of what I thought as a young girl of what human trafficking is. It's far more com uh, complicated than that. So, but yeah, it was a pretty shocking statistic when I read that. But if you want the source or the data, I'm happy to send that over. I can send it over to you for sure. And the report from our committee isn't yet done, but when it is done, I'll be sharing it as well on my social or if uh, the recommendations of what we want to do about it or what we should be doing about it from witness testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. I'm sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks, Michelle, for coming and presenting that. Uh, I wanted to question back to you on Airbnbs. Yep. Um, as you know, we have uh, put in place and are working on a three-year plan here, okay. um, getting to licensing the third year, which is next year. Um, we've put forward calls to the province to look at a provincial solution, mm -hmm. which, as you probably know, exists in Quebec and Nova Scotia, um, because we think this patchwork quilt of 500 and some different regulations in every different municipality is, is not the best we can do. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of curious how the federal government plays into this, other than CRA and revenue mm -hmm. uh, and taxation of them as a business. I'm just wondering what other things are being, if anything, is being entertained at the federal level. From our party's position, obviously we're opposition on our government, we don't currently have a policy and that's kind of what I guess what I was asking, because I know it is a major issue, especially in our beautiful lake areas of, of the riding, right? Um, and I know Selwyn had put forward, I believe Brian Henry at Selwyn had put forward a motion around them. And I just, I guess what I was wondering was if you had an ask, was there one around what you would like to see the federal, or do you even want to see the federal government intervene in something like this, I guess was what I was looking for in terms of a question, because I know it is sort of being dealt with on a municipal and hopefully provincial level, but just wasn't sure if there was any interest on a federal level. Yeah. If I can just follow just, up, yeah. I, I think- Just one, one thing, let's just call them short-term rentals rather than yeah. a brand name. Yes, right, yes, thank you. Did I do that? I did it. I'll take, it better. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take ownership. So, <laughs> it's all right, there, there's, there's still similar um, things. I'm not sure there is. I mean, other than the revenue yeah. aspect, which I think they're already doing in terms of ensuring that if they make over a certain amount, yeah. that they're registered and they're paying their fair taxes uh, to the government. Um, I think it's really a provincial issue in trying to have some sort of consistent approach so that, uh, you know, particularly the corporations that are moving into managing these, these things can't be opportunistic and move from one municipality mm -hmm. to the other because it's easier for them. Uh, and they don't have a string of regulations against them. So I think we really feel that a provincial solution is the best. Uh, in the absence of that, we have moved forward and you know, are in year two, um, moving into year three of licensing. And I think in those three years, we've seen lots of neighboring municipalities go the licensing route. So it'll be more readily accepted because mm -hmm. uh, there was pretty significant pushback to licensing uh, when we first proposed it three years ago. But I think that you know, that ship has sailed. That's the only way we know to actually control. Thanks for that. And I don't think the federal government's prepared or willing to even entertain making a countrywide short-term mm -hmm. rental policy. I think that's probably should be left to the, the uh, provinces and the municipalities. Maybe some guidance or oversight would be wonderful if mm -hmm. that could happen. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Franz. <clears throat> at, at, at one time, uh, that there was quite a bit of interest in changing the elect election system mm -hmm. on the way from first past the post, mm -hmm. uh, like rank system, rank voting. Is there any movement on that, Michelle? I hear rumblings of it, but I've never seen anything further other than people talking about it. Um, I don't know if anything has changed other than that conversation. I don't know if it's taken any step further. That does lead me actually though, it does remind me that um, the boundary redistributions were done. So a few guys may know this as well, which means in the next election, um, I would not be the member of parliament here. It would be Jamie Schmale. So, or whoever wins Jamie's writing. 
I'm just being super optimistic for Jamie. Um, so uh, yeah, so that is one thing to consider. But I think you know, I guess I could put it back to you. Would you like to see? Would you like to see a change in electoral reform? Yes, I would. Yeah. Okay. I think it may create more interest. Yeah. In, in writings that are you know predominantly liberal or predominantly mm -hmm. conservative, mm -hmm. it may uh, give people a, a reason to vote. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a tough system that we have right now. It was always a the big issue, right? You vote for the per well, I like the person, but I don't like the party, or yeah, I like the yeah. party and I don't like the person. I like the person, but I don't like the leader, and I don't like the leader, but I like <laughs> and it's yeah. it is a challenge for people for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, and I don't know if they'll reopen that or revisit that or not. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I see none. I just have a comment that it terrifies me that Peterborough is number three ranked for human trafficking in Canada. I mean, we are very close to Peterborough. We are not that far away. There's, yeah. you know, that's a, that just terrifies me. I thought I'd make that point. Yeah. Thank you for being part of that and trying to find some solutions. There. Really, really we have some pretty great police officers doing some pretty great work. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they are aware of it. And I think that's key. Um, but, you know, I, as I say, my favorite saying in the whole wide world is anything mentionable is manageable. And I think this was just something that we didn't really mm -hmm. talk about or people really knew about, right? But uh, yeah, I don't think, um, we don't want to leave people in a state of fear. I don't want to do that, but it is certainly something to be mindful of for sure. Thank you very much. You guys Thank are you. very easy on me. I know. <laughs> this is nothing like Ottawa. Come on. <laughs> You're not going to, very, very easy on me. Any other questions from council? Any questions from staff? Anybody have any questions with Michelle? Just to remind the staff, anytime, please reach out to our office. That's what we would love. You know, that's what we're there for. And uh, if uh, you can't get any answers, please let me know. Or um, that's my whole mandate in our office is we are here to serve and we are here to help. We may not know the answer, but it's our job to help you find the answer. So okay. thanks very much. Thank you very much, Michelle. Okay. Entertain a motion to uh, proceed with that. Presentation. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, do I have a seconder? Councilor Franzen for a seconder. That is a motion to receive. I will I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you. Okay, now I find where I was. We're moving back to item six of our agenda. I will entertain a motion to suspend our regular council meeting and go into a public meeting. A motion for that effect. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, for a mover, and Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. All in favor? That motion is carried. We are now in a public meeting. Okay, we can move on to item 6.1 of our agenda. And I think, Sarah, you will introduce that file. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. This is a public meeting under Section 34 of the Planning Act to consider an amendment to the Municipalities Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw B2014-070. A notice of public meeting for today's application containing the prescribed information was circulated to all landowners within a 120 meter radius of the subject lands at least 20 days prior to this meeting. The notice was also mailed to all prescribed agencies, public bodies, and persons in accordance with the regulations. Anyone wanting to be notified of any decision from today's public meeting must send in a written request to either myself or the clerk, and the notice of passing will be mailed to them, setting out the method and manner in which appeals may be made to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Please note that if a person does not send a written comment prior to the passing of the bylaw or make an oral submission at a public meeting, that person may not be entitled to appeal the decision. This is a public meeting for file number 23-10, SPAL, to consider a zoning bylaw amendment submitted by agent Carrie Stevenson on behalf of the property owners Thomas Bertram Spall, Sheridan Lee Graham, and Barbara K. Kumage to fulfill a condition of consent for file number B-14222 and B-14322. The newly created parcels, which are subject to today's rezoning proposal, are located along Lakehurst Circle Road. 
The consent applications resulted in the creation of two new vacant lots with a total lot area of 1.07 acres each and a frontage of approximately 148 feet each on Lake Hurst Circle Road. The properties are currently zoned rural. The severed parcels, which are subject to the zoning bylaw amendment, do not meet the provisions of the rural zone and are being rezoned to the rural residential zone. The severed lots meet the lot area and frontage requirements of the rural residential zone. The application was accompanied by an R plan. No site plan was submitted as there does not appear to be an intent to develop the lots in the immediate future. There is a planning report on the agenda from the municipality's planning staff. The report states that the application is generally consistent with the provincial policy statement and growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The municipality has received one comment from Peterborough Public Health stating that they have no objection to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. No further comments were received by any circulated agencies or neighboring property owners. No comments were received expressing an intent to submit an oral submission at a public meeting. Further, if any member of the public did not register with the clerk indicating their intent to make an oral submission, but would like to do so at this time, please use a raise a hand feature if you are in the virtual gallery or physically raise your hand now if you're in the physical gallery so that we are able to promote you in order for you to make an oral submission. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Sergeant Delamart or Junior Planner. Is there anyone in the gallery for or against this application? Would you like to speak? I'm seeing no hands at the moment. Okay. No one in the virtual. No one in the virtual gallery? Let's see. Can any members of council have any questions? I'm seeing none. Go ahead, Council Braver. Junior Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and uh, the council approve the zoning bylaw amendment as written. Do we make that motion here? When we rise. Yeah, when we, we can have that motion when we rise. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Any other conversation? I think we've just received the report. Uh, we'll just reconvene it and then okay. 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 We will need a motion to reconvene a regular council meeting. Is anyone prepared to make the motion? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong and a seconder. Councillor Franzen for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? The motion is carried. We are back in our regular council meeting. Okay, we can move on to item seven of our agenda, which is business arising out of the statutory public meeting. Item 7.1, Sarah Della Marker, our junior planner, would you like to speak to this file? Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. There was a public meeting held for file number 23-10. At this time, staff are recommending that council one, receives the report from the planning staff, and two, the council supports the requested zoning bylaw amendment attached to today's agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? I'm seeing none. Councilor Braybrook, would you like to make your motion? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to receive the report and also the council approve the zoning bylaw amendment as written. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Okay, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing no hands. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Okay, we can move on to skipping item eight. We can move on to item nine of our agenda, which is delegations. And we have a delegation 9.1 is Ricardo Borges. <laughs> Ricardo, are you online? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ricardo. You Fantastic. Okay, I just like to give you a, a quick history of Buckhorn Lake Estates uh, before I make any proposals. Okay, I had my lawyer do a title search on Block E for the subdivision agreement, and it appears that Buckhorn Estates was created to be a waterfront community where all lot owners have the opportunity to have a place to dock their boat. Buckhorn Estates consists of blocks A to F and 115 lots, 12 of which are directly on the water. There are a total of 108 houses built, and Block C was originally intended uh, to be a marina and a dredged shoreline, according to the subdivision agreement, and was later sold off as a building lot, then divided in two. 
blocks A and F were given to the Crown and in their current condition and arrangement are not accessible. Uh, section 23 of the original subdivision agreement states that the developer, some corporation, give Harvey Township $8,000 in lieu of park lands. Now, Blocks B was owned by the Buckhorn Estates Association, then sold off uh, in the late 1990s. It was a condition that all lot owners be a part of the association and pay dues according to the subdivision agreement that my lawyer had found. Uh, block E in Buckhorn Estates is for the use of all the lot owners equally and that the current arrangement is unfair. The municipality of Harvey, now Trent Lakes, approved this subdivision and it appears that the township has allowed or was not aware of changes that were made and blocks being sold off limiting the recreational access for the lot owners. The current arrangement for the residents to dock a boat, I believe is unfair. Uh, the director's policy for all intents and purposes gives residents with the dock ownership of waterfront on block E. The directors claim that they have the right to do this uh, because of section four of the lease agreement. I've had uh, two different dock manufacturer installers come out and say that docking spaces can be significant, significantly increased with finger docks and there are currently no finger docks. Uh, I'd like to ask council to look into this matter and consider amending the lease agreement with specific wording to increase the dock spaces available to residents in here and stop the practice of ownership of waterfront on block E. We also believe that blocks A and F that consist of considerable waterfronts and that were transferred to the Crown be transferred back to Trent or transferred to Trent Lakes for access of the, re of the residents. And I also like to invite the council members down to Block E for a meeting to discuss possible solutions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, I'm seeing no questions of you, Ricardo. Any other comments whatsoever? I'm seeing none. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Oh, go ahead, Councillor Berger. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, through you, Mayor. Just. Uh, one comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bor Bor Borges. Am I pronouncing it? Yeah, that, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my only, uh, just reviewing the materials. My only comment is um, uh, that speaks to the association uh, clause four that you you had mentioned that uh, that it was association basically will sole approval of the association for any I guess amendments or. Or anything else to dealing with docks, so I'm not sure how the municipality, um, uh, what our role uh, or the municipality's role is as far as uh, any remedies uh, that you're seeking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the comment. Um, the current policy that the uh, association, the directors have, uh, states that the if you have a dock currently on the waterfront that you can transfer that waterfront space to a purchaser of your property which creates uh pretty much like an ownership of the waterfront i'm not sure if, if you understand how that uh, works Okay. And what and what effect that that section four in that clause has? Now, I I, I did talk to a couple uh, dock manufacturers, and it is possible to remove docks and put finger docks to increase the dock space. And however, there's there's no wording in this agreement, and I suspect that uh, when this agreement was written up in 2016. 
the uh, council members at that time were not aware that there, there was no dock spaces available. It appears that, that the council you know, thought that there was dock spaces available there for everybody in the community. Help you, Councillor Freeman? Uh, somewhat. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more something that our uh, building official mm -hmm. I think would be able to possibly speak to. I just don't know where uh, the municipalities, um, I, I guess, our purview of uh, interceding uh, with a um, an association um, protocol or procedure. Okay. Go ahead, Captain Marathon. Uh, thank you, and through you, Mayor Lamson. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to receive the report and defer any further conversation until item 10.4.7 on our agenda when we receive a staff report on the situation. Okay. I think that may clarify some yeah. of the okay. questions that, that you've raised, Council Graber. Okay, I'll second that. And we have a seconder is Councilor Franzen. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Ricardo, for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, we can move on to item 9.2 of our agenda, which is still in delegations, which is Bruce Averill from Lakehurst Hall Board. Go ahead, Bruce. You can unmute yourself and speak to this item. You can hear me? I'm sorry. I... Yep. Okay, great, great. So good afternoon, Council. Good to see you all. I'm here on behalf of uh, the Lakers Hall Board to talk about property development at Lakers Hall. Next slide, please. And uh, in this presentation, I refer to uh, how our property de development plan for Lakers Hall aligns with the strategic plan, facilities master plan, open spaces master plan, and the plan for economic development and tourism. So I wanna go through a number of these points um, in this particular slide. Uh, the first one being that the purpose of the open spaces master plan is to realize a municipal wide connected open trail network. Included in the facility recommendations is to create trailheads at community centers, which of course, uh, Lakers Hall is, in addition to using existing trails when possible. In 2019, the Municipality of Trent Lakes um, Facilities Master Plan report was completed and was developed to create a 20-year plan for facilities in Trent Lakes. Uh, its scope includes community halls. And key considerations for the plan include the encouragement of municipalities to develop a system of publicly accessible parkland, open space, and trails. And our proposal for the development of Lakers Hall would capture all three. It would act as parkland, parkland for trail users for respite, enjoyment, and entertainment. It would act as an open space intertwined with the trail system. And the Open Spaces Master Plan key considerations state there is considerable overlap between the facilities master plan and the open spaces master plan, given most facilities in this instance, Lakers Hall, could act as nodes in a large trail network. It further states that the an open spaces master plan will coordinate with the recommendations from, from the facilities master plan whenever possible. In, in, consult, in consultation with the Trent Lakes Parks and Rec uh, Recreation Department it was determined there's an existing trail system behind the Lakers Hall and I'll show you a map later I know you've all seen it but uh, trail 15 which runs down to Lakers Road and um, it would be a viable starting point um, for implementation of the open uh, spaces master plan as well as incorporating uh, this proposed project this starting point could also include the existing trail system um, uh, from Lakers Hall to Buckhorn School and in turn Buckhorn Community Center. 
I know there was some costing done on the open spaces master plan, so I've referenced that in the last bullet point as well. And as you know, uh, Council has made a commitment to completing specific open spaces master plan recommendations in this term of Council. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the recommendations, the facility recommendations were to create trailheads at community centers. And uh, there was some focus on improving recreation opportunities and access to them. And uh, also to identify and plan for new recreation opportunities, which we believe the development of the open space uh, at the Lakers Hall uh it pertains to that so 12 of 18 recommendations for this term of council are highly recommended a lakers tall community center trail is one of only two trail development recommendations that are on municipality of trent lakes property and are highly recommended next slide please so these are i think you've probably seen this as uh, one page with trails to the north of trent lakes and trails to the south of trent lakes if you look at the one on the left here you'll see um i, I don't know how clearly you can see it but you'll see on the right hand side in the middle f7 which is lake was tall with a trail running south and a trail running north which would go uh, to the north side of sandy lake and back to buckhorn next slide please so, you know, just, just like the other um, community halls in Trent Lakes have received improvements over the years, Cavendish and Galloway Halls, uh, Lakers Hall has also received um, you know, some improvements with uh, renovation of the hall. They had uh, purchased the Lakers General Store in order to enlarge the parking lot. But the southeast corner of the property is an open space which has not been developed and links directly to the trail network. So this is the next step in municipality facility improvement at Lake Hurst Hall. Uh, next slide, please. So what would the, the uh, development consist of? Well, first of all, we have to clean up the property a bit. And the grass is like about, you know, waist high. Um, there's some sumac trees that need to be taken out. Um, and also some, there's a few trees that need, need to be taken down. But one of the things that we're trying to accomplish here is almost like an amphitheater with tiered seating on the hill because behind that parking lot to the south, the, the ground goes down almost like a back uh, uh, walkout in a house. And uh, on that, we're looking to put three tiers of seating with armor stone uh, facing onto a small performance area. We would need some lighting, some a an access route, which would really consist of a pathway uh, that would allow vehicles, not cars, but more, um, we'll call it landscape equipment, uh, to be able to go down there and do work. And it would join right onto the trail system. A performance space, um, which would ultimately look more like a gazebo uh, with a, a flat space underneath it for performances. And I'm not talking about rock bands, um, you know, I'm talking about, uh, you know, our, our summer the a summer theater camp, let's say, for kids. Um, or um, we could use it as a, um, uh, so we could also use it for uh, a municipal space uh, to promote our trail system. So almost like a seminar uh, location for groups such as Kawartha Lake Stewards Association, so people can learn more about the trail system. It's a perfect place for it. Um, and of course, you need some tree and shrub planting just to finish uh, everything off. Outdoor programming may also include music, performance, plays, weddings. Uh, we can have uh, wedding receptions, but not really wedding ceremonies uh, at Lake Hall right now. Uh, camps and even culinary experiences. Um, Lakers Hall already supports youth performing arts with 15 students in our first classes this past spring. We're looking forward to our fall program and an outdoor performance space would facilitate summer theater camps as well. And you may notice in the at the bottom of this slide, it references the festival of small halls. So 
um, the uniqueness of Lakers Tall, which I call the Massey Hall of Trent Lakes, has attracted an invitation to be part of the Festival of Small Halls. This includes music performances at over 34 small halls throughout Ontario in October. And we will be hosting the Abrams Brothers on October the 14th. Next slide, please. So if you take a look at this up in the upper left-hand corner, I'm really showing you what we're hoping to accomplish. Some sound barrier trees on the left side, mm -hmm. tiered seating at the bottom of that uh, uh, piece, in the middle, a small performance area, and a playing field to the far south, which, which is adjoining the forest, and a pathway on the right-hand side to access the trail system. If you look down at the bottom on the left-hand side, this is sort of an idea that's already in place at Trent University. I don't know if you've been down Chamong and you've seen Trail College. This is the amphitheater behind Trail College. It's gorgeous. Now, they, they built it with some very nice materials, and I'm not suggesting that we go to that extent. I'm saying not bare bones, but keep it a little bit more local with some armor stone proceeding and a wood pavilion. And then you can see some different styles of armor stone there as well. Um, yeah, so next slide, please. So these are the property surveys that we got from the Recreation and Facilities uh, Department. So we want to, so this will help us in, in development of that southeast corner of the property. We will continue to work with our Recreation and Facilities staff. Um, who and they recommended a, a more detailed plan for property development, which we're in the process of, of uh, getting going. And next slide, please. So who and what do we need to rely on to make this development complete? So first bullet point on the left, we've met with uh, Matt from uh, Recreation and Facilities, and he said, uh, that given where we might start with the open spaces master plan on trail 15, excuse my dog barking here. <laughs> He's whining to go out, but I don't want to let him go out. Um, so we, they uh, suggested preparation of a plan um, and uh, a proposal was recommended. So, um, the uh, one of the other things we need to do is we need to clean up the property we need municipal staff and volunteers give me one second sir the dog has an emergency app he's out <laughs> sorry about that it's okay bruce i'm here by, I'm here by myself with my dog so um we need to do some tree and shrub planting, some tree chainsawing and property cleanup. So this could be done by municipal staff. And even the hall folks uh, on the board said we could get some volunteers together to do some of that cleanup. Maybe not taking down trees, but um, doing some of the other work there. We've approached a landscape designer and uh, he's actually come out to the site. We haven't gone as far as getting a landscape design done because we wanted to come to council and ask your opinion of this, should we continue with our project and push forward, get uh, landscape designs, more, um, more quotes on work to be done before we proceed? We're, we're looking for your support on that. We have uh, gone to a number of um, construction landscapers. I'll give you an example, Young's Construction. So they actually did work on both the amphitheater at Trail College, Trent University, and also uh, they did work at um, at the Grove Theatre out in Fenland Falls. I'm sure some of you have heard of that. And they're great tourist attractions. We would need an electrician to help with some lighting. And at grants as well might be something we'd like to take a look at. So uh, Trillium grants would be uh, one option. And I also saw that the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and, uh, sorry, uh, Culture and Sport have a tourism development fund that's open for applications now as well. So we had we had wanted um, recreation and facilities to clear out the space and remove brush and grass 
but they recommended that we uh, put a, a plan or a proposal together first. Uh, staff indicated this open space aligned with the Lakers Tall Trail development, which is a high priority recommendation on municipally owned land. And we wanted to get council's feedback before developing few, uh, further plan details. So with, with your support and approval, we would go ahead with a landscape design drawing. We ask you to, to direct staff to clean up and clear out this open space so it can be used. Or, as I'd mentioned, we can get a contractor to do it or volunteers can ship in to do so as well. And we also ask that you request our CAO to meet with our uh, Lakers Hall Council liaison to explore funding options including open space master plan funding and grant funding. So, so I thank you for having me today and, I, and, and I'm uh, curious as to your response or support for our plan. Okay, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? No questions. Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Uh, thanks very much uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, thanks very much, Bruce, for your presentation. Um, are you able to comment as, as to the uh, Ontario RT08, uh, the regional tourism organization, and how that may be of assistance and uh, possibly raising some funds uh, to augment the cost? Yeah, I saw. I just I saw that come out the other day through RT08. The fact that the ministry had come out with uh, the tourism development fund, and and now was the time. That's that's where I found out about it. They had uh, announced it, so uh, I don't know too much more than that. I would have to uh, see what the application process involved. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I, 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 any other questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Lamb said. Um, thanks, Bruce. <clears throat> Sorry, having a little trouble with my voice today. Um, first of all, I think this is an excellent proposition that you're bringing forward. It's certainly in line with uh, our various plans, as you've pointed out. Um, another thing you didn't mention is that it expands the use of our municipally owned community centers, which I think is a high priority for all of us, is, is to leverage those more. Um, and it would be a connector for other trails. So I conceptually, I'm very much in support of the proposal. Um, I do think we should wait to do any cleaning up or clearing out until we have the, the plan and drawings um, that you would, uh, as I think you said, your group would continue to work on. Um, so I would support the further development of that. Um, and I also think it's a great idea if our CAO is willing to meet with the board to talk about potential grant applications that could fund this. Obviously, if we were to move forward on this, uh, it would have to be a budget item for next year. Uh, and we would entertain that probably in the well, start in September, but we would entertain that in the November to December timeframe. Um, so feedback for me is, yeah, I think this is, you know, terrific initiative, appreciate it. It's uh, certainly aligned with our various plans. We would all like to see something concrete uh, and visible and operational come out of those plans. And this would be one way to do it. So uh, for me, uh, you know, go ahead to, to do the plan. As I say, I don't want to see any cleaning up or clearing out until we you know, get the plan and the drawings in place. So let's not disturb the place first, but let's, uh, I would certainly support your group moving forward. Okay, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councilor Braybrook. Sorry, through you, Mayor. Uh, just a uh, <clears throat> comment as well as just looking at the, uh, the mapping um, that uh, trail, proposed trail system uh, from Lakers that would lead down through behind Buckhorn School and to uh, Buckhorn Community Center. So you're not only sort of improving uh, the municipal uh, community halls, it's also including, uh, you know, our Buckhorn School and, and, and importantly, our uh, Buckhorn Community Center uh, and that sort of thing. So it's almost like you're, um, you're uh, looking after two, uh, two interests, uh, if you will, and that sort of thing. So. Okay. okay. Councilor Franz, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's a very interesting concept, and I think that it's something that we should probably move forward with. And I agree with Deputy Mayor Armstrong that it would be a budgetary item 
for 2024. I, I think that we probably, after you get your plan done, we'd need to have some costings of how many hours of municipal uh, labor we would need for the cleanup project and uh, some other minor detail, Bruce. Okay. That, that, that's great. Your comments are fantastic, and, and uh, I look forward to bringing uh, your comments back to uh, the board, and uh, we'll continue to work on uh, getting some costing together uh, so that we can talk more about um, the, uh, I guess, the budget process uh, later this year. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Through you, Mayor, uh, just a question. This may be to, and it may not be able to be answered right now, but it would be to staff and the Parks and Rec uh, Director um, as far as um, we're sending uh, Bruce back to the board to uh, come up with some costings and, and whatnot in a budget and, and actually putting some money out to get a, a detailed um, uh, set of drawings and, and that sort of thing to bring back. Is there any way that um, our staff uh, would be able to assist Bruce with what they would be looking for as far as them moving forward as opposed to uh, not necessarily guessing, but Bruce uh, and the board trying to guess at what would be needed uh, just so there's not uh, an expense that they don't have to spend. Uh, if they could uh, work in coordination with the, uh, the staff, that would be uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's important because it'll be a lot of this work will be accomplished by our staff. Um, I just I just have a couple comments before. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, oh, Councillor Francis. Yeah, I was uh, just building on those comments. I think that we probably would need a staff report uh, on availability of time and you know costing and uh, some of the other details. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I think some of the work would be property maintenance because it is kind of yep. shabby looking down in there we should say yeah and it's and it wouldn't hurt to have that cleaned up a little bit but uh, my comments were we live in armor stone country we complain that we have many quarries here so locally sourced armor stone should be relatively easy to obtain i think that's a, a great idea to have that part of your amphitheater seating um, and also we're neglecting that the Lakers Road is, is a county road that when they upgrade Lakers Road, let's hope that they will do some active transportation lanes on both sides. And that can connect us to the Chase Memorial Park. So it's 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 kind of a centrally located area. It's a bit of an adventure to get there, but that's not that far away. So that's another asset to having an amphitheater of some form in that area. So I think those are all great ideas and hopefully we can move forward on some of them. Thank you very much, Bruce. Thank you all for having me today. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, is anyone prepared to make a motion to some effect? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, I would make a motion to receive. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? Yeah. Councilor Braver for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor, that motion is carried. Thank you very much, Bruce, for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, we can move on now to <laughs> item 9.3 of our agenda, which is Kevin M. Duguay and Gary, I'm not even going to try the last name, for a zoning bylaw amendment. If you are online, Kevin, please unmute yourself. And speak yes, thank you, Mayor Lamshed. I'm assuming that you're able to hear me. Yes, we can. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, if I might, I'd, I'd like to congratulate uh, Mr. Averill and his group with the uh, Lakehurst Hall proposal. That is very intriguing. Congratulations to his group mm -hmm. and your municipality if you were to be able to contemplate uh, what, um, uh, excuse me, implement what is proposed. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to take in that presentation, so thank you. Uh, your Worship, uh, members of council, uh, for the record, my name is Kevin Duguay. I am the planning consultant for Mr. Tim Triani, who also joins me uh, on this telephone call. Um, this application, which is limited to zoning bylaw amendment, was originally considered in uh, November. A report was authored at that time uh, to the mayor and members of council, which indicated um, it outlined certain recommendations and also indicated that a archaeological assessment would be necessary to advance uh, the application for formal approval consideration. 
I can advise the council that uh, AMIC consultants have carried out the requisite stage one and stage two archaeological assessment, and I can advise council there are no issues from an archaeological perspective. Having said that, um, uh, I have um, had opportunity uh, to review uh, in detail the report that was prepared by uh, Chris Jones, the municipality's planning consultant. And uh, I won't spend time uh, commenting on his critique of my planning justification report with the exception of one very important um, matter. Um, the, I have the opportunity to work with all area, all county municipalities and the county itself. And in all current applications, it is a requirement that my planning justification reports consider the implications of a land use approval application, a zoning application, what does it mean um, to the propending new county official plan? And it's my professional opinion, your worship, members of council, that this application is in conformity with the policy directives of that plan. I just wanted to state, like, it wasn't out of place to uh, comment on the official plan. It's important that that be done. Now, the application, simply put, uh, intends to build upon an existing seasonal dwelling that's located on the top of a very steep embankment. The intention is to um, increase the living area, utilizing the uh, portions of the existing building and foundation to accommodate family needs, but most specifically to accommodate barrier-free requirements. So uh, my client has retained uh, Bob Topping, who is one of uh, Ontario's foremost barrier-free designers, to arrive at a design that will accommodate family members who have um, mobility issues to be able to enjoy at least the cottage portion of the property. I have considered, um, we have also considered the uh, recommendation found on page seven of the uh, report um, I would state for the record that I do not support certainly the app, that the application be denied. This application has planning merit. From my perspective, your worship, in summary, this application is consistent with the policy directives of the 2020 provincial policy statement. It is in conformity with the policy directives of the 2020 growth plan. It is conformity with the uh, official plan documents, including the July 2022 county official plan. Your Worship, I also acknowledge that county council, I believe at a most recent meeting, has asked the province perhaps just to hold back on the, the final approval of the county official plan. But the, the matters that were being considered for my review of that uh, decision do not implicate um, this particular application in any way. I also uh, find the application to be in keeping with the purpose and intent of your zoning bylaw. We have considered the um, recommendation, uh, that is, if this if council were inclined to approve the application, that a shoreline restoration plan uh, dealing with slope stability, surface water features during construction, landscaping, the, the existing cottage has it's existed on top of that embankment for years. We're proposing to reconstruct on that same in that same area, and it's my opinion that a building permit would appropriately address structural integrity and slope stability. I'm not sure that slope stability needs to necessarily be addressed through shoreline restoration, and we're not in, impacting the shoreline in any way. The shoreline is what it is, and we're not changing or altering it in any manner. The encroachment agreement, recommendation B, we understand that would be required. That's, that's not uncommon, Your Worship. That happens from time to time. Uh, the site plan agreement, I understand this to be a standard municipal requirement. From my take, it might be, I view it as being a, perhaps a bit excessive in this instance, but if it's necessary for the approval of this application, uh, my client uh, would be prepared to enter into the agreement hoping that the encroachment agreement and the shoreline restoration could be all wrapped up together as a concurrent matter. And um, I make myself available as uh, my client in the event, um, your worship, that council or staff have questions. Might I conclude by, I'd like to offer my thanks to staff for accommodating our ability to appear as a delegation 
Um, I think Jesse Clark behind the scenes has helped make this possible and it should not go unacknowledged. So thank you ever so much for this opportunity. Those, those are my remarks, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Anyone have any comments or questions? I just have a comment. I, 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 you know, I've been to that site before for other reasons, and uh, it is a steep hill. I mean, but the cottage exists today, so it's not like you're changing the entire shoreline or the entire lot. It's a very geographically challenging lot. It seems like your your ideas are reasonable to me to develop that lot. Any Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none. We can, anyone prepare to make a motion of some form? Go ahead, Councilor. Uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to receive uh, Kevin du Duguay's report or presentation. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councilor, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much, Kevin, for your presentation. <coughs> You are quite welcome. Okay, we can now move on to item 10.4.2 of our agenda. And Sarah Della Marker, you can speak to this one. Oh, I'm wrong. Oh my, I've got, I'm way ahead of the game. What the heck is going on? My iPad. Jumped a couple pages on me. We will go now to item, uh, sorry, Sarah. We can, we can move to number 10 on our agenda, which is staff reports. And Evan Greer, our Director of Public Works, if you could please speak to that file. Thank you, Mayor. Hands head through you, Mayor, to members of council before you. Today is a report regarding the road occupancy permit. I did bring a report at the July 11th meeting just outlining the road occupancy permit process, and this is just to formalize it with the bylaw. Um, as well as adding the $100 fee, which we will amend our fees and char charges by law, I think at a coinciding meeting, um, and then just advertising or getting the info out through our social media platforms that this is now in effect. Um, it's just sort of closing it up and hopefully putting a nice little bow on it and here for any questions you have. Thank you very much. Though. Anyone have any questions on that? You know, I think this is important. I think we do have very few times where this is going to be needed, but it's important for you and your staff to know where things are happening and council and other staff to know that things are happening in our municipality. I think it's important. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, was anyone prepared to make a motion? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor Lamsted. Um, I will make the motion as presented to receive the report to approve the road occupancy permit policy uh, and that we direct staff to amend the schedule of fees and chain charges by law and that staff share this uh, permit policy and application through our website and social media channels. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? Okay. Councilor Franzen for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor, that motion is carried. Go ahead. Sorry, if I may, it seems like Councillor Cadigan may be on the line, so I'm just going to see if we can get him participating in the meeting. Okay, please do. We'll take a short break. <clears throat> he for, probably forgot the time change. Uh, Councillor Cadigan, I see you on the line. I sent you an email with the panelist invite if you wanted to check your email and rejoin.
You're out there. <clears throat> Councilor Cadigan, you are muted if you wanted to unmute, and I'm not sure if you wanted to or are able to share your webcam as well. On to item 10.1 is recreation facilities. We have no report. 10.3, sort two, and 10.3, fire and emergency services. We have no report. And we can move on to 10.4, which is building and planning. We have 10.4.1. Sarah de la Marter, junior planner, would you like to speak to this file? Sorry for the musical chairs I created earlier. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. There was a public meeting held for file number 22-29, Tip Shirani, on November 22nd, 2022, for the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. The applicant requested that the file be deferred in order to discuss the proposal with planning staff, as the initial planning report was not supported by the proposal. In light of recent communications regarding the application, staff would like to provide the council with a clear timeline of key dates involved with the process. Uh, the application was initially received on October 26, 2022. Uh, following that, the applicant requested a deferral from Council at the November 22, 2022 public meeting. A meeting with the applicant and staff was held on December 15, 2022 at 2 p.m., where discussions were held and the external planning consultant provided valuable feedback on the proposal as well as his, as his position on the proposal. After the meeting, there was a lapse in communication, and we received the planning justification report from KMD Planning Services, as well as an archaeological assessment on May 29, 2023, approximately five months after the last conversation took place. Given the time elapsed and the workload during the busy period, as well as the fact that there's one council meeting per month in the summer months, it took some time to review the report compare it with previous notes and re-familiarize ourselves with the details of the application. We want to assure that council, to council, that the application has been progressing <clears throat> at a reasonable pace considering the circumstances. The subject land has a lot area of approximately 0.2 acres. However, Chris's original November 2022 report identified a discrepancy of the lot area with MPAC, which suggests a lot area of 0.32 acres which is suspected to be due to the exclusion of the original shore road allowance from the lot area on the application. The lot has an irregular shoreline frontage of approximately 40.6 meters or 133 feet. The lot is currently occupied by a single story dwelling with a floor area of approximately 101.45 square meters or 1,092 square feet. An attached deck with a floor area of approximately 50 square meters or 538.2 square feet. Additionally, a shed exists in the water yard, which was not included on the applicant's site plan. The applicant's lot is characterized by an extensive staircase in the water yard, which also encroaches onto the abutting municipal unopened road allowance. The applicant has submitted an application for an encroachment agreement to recognize the staircase's location. The applicant is proposing to construct a replacement dwelling with a ground floor area of 140 square meters or 1,507 square feet and introduces a partial second story to the dwelling, accessible basement, and a new attached deck. The applicant would require relief from the 30 meter water yard setback to accommodate the 18.44 meter setback from the dwelling and 15 meter setback from the deck. The applicant would also require a reduction to the exterior side yard for the deck from six meters to 0.38 meters from the deck 
and 2.61 meters from the dwelling. Additionally, the applicant's proposed septic, septic system uh, would be located within the required water yard, and there would be a reduction to the private right-of-way setback from 12 meters to 4.6 meters. As stated in the November 22nd meeting, of 2022, it should be noted that the applicant is proposing further development over the steep incline towards the high water mark, for which there is great concern that the stability of said slope would be impaired during and after construction, as the dwelling expansion proposes to expand over the crest of the steep slope. Section 4.30.3 of the zoning bylaw establishes a number of regulations that authorizes as of right expansions to non compliant dwellings located in the water yard. In this case, however, the proposal does not comply with the regulations because the proposed replacement dwelling was not able to maintain the furthest existing shoreline setback. And furthermore, the proposed deck would create a new encroachment into the water yard. The proposed deck would also create new encroachments in the required exterior side yard setback. It is important to note that the applicant's proposal has not changed in any way since the meeting held in November 22, 2022. The only thing that has changed is the addition of a planning justification report to which our external planning consultant, Chris Jones, has provided commentary on and an archeological assessment. The attached uh, report notes that the applicant's planning justification report claims that Fortescue Lake is not an at capacity lake and isn't listed in the official plan as such. However, section 9.5.1 of the adopted county official plan indeed has Fortescue Lake listed as an at capacity, highly sensitive lake trout lake. The report also comments on several sections in reference to the provincial policy statement and growth plan for the Great Pole and Horseshoe, <clears throat> including that shoreline restoration, quote, to the maximum extent possible, end quote, is a requirement of section 4.2.4.5, subsection B of the growth plan. The external planning consultant concludes that the analysis of the report dated November 9th, 2022 is unchanged by the supplemental material with the exception that the requirement for an archeological assessment would no longer be required if council elects to approve the zoning bylaw amendment mm -hmm. as one has been provided. Planning staff recommend that should council be in general agreement with the analysis of the attached planning report, the application be denied. Alternatively, should council be inclined to support the proposed application, the following four conditions are recommended. One, that the applicant submit a shoreline restoration plan with a focus on assessing slope stability, protecting surface water features during construction, and landscaping and naturalizing the shoreline post-construction. Two, the applicant enter into an encroachment agreement with the municipality for the use of the road allowance for access, parking, and the existing access stair and three, the applicant enter into a site plan agreement with the municipality. And four, upon receipt of and or finalization of the above requirements to the satisfaction of the planning department, staff be directed to prepare a zoning bylaw amendment for council's consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much there. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lamson. Um, having difficulty with this one. Um, I appreciate Kevin Duguay's presentation. Um, I appreciate that this is a difficult uh, lot on which to put a replacement building. Um, but I don't know what to do with some of our external planners' concerns because I don't think they've been addressed. I mean, one is dependency on the road allowance for parking. I think that's fine. That could be done by an agreement with the municipality suggested as one of the conditions. Um, the other concern was that the proposed addition, because this is a larger footprint and a larger deck, would create a new southerly encroachment into the water yard. Um, the other thing is that the addition to the dwelling over the current crest could lead to slope and shoreline stability issues. Um, so I'm just not sure that those concerns have been addressed. The actual drawing <laughs> and specifications, it appears, have not changed since December when those concerns were first raised. So it, it looks like, and I'm kind of intuiting here, <laughs> that our external planner would like to see a shrinking of the footprint of the new dwelling and a lesser encroachment of the deck 
onto the uh, uh, water yard. So I would be interested in other councillors' comments. Um, that they have more planning experience than I do. Go ahead, Councillor Press. <laughs> I, I share many of the concerns that uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong has. Um, one other concern I would have is uh, I, I believe they should have an uh, engineered stability report on the slope. That's been a requirement on some properties from the Port of the Conservation Authority in Crystal Lake. And any other comment? Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I, if you look at the picture, the, the storyline is quite stable there. I do agree that you would need to have some sort of more professional than me looking at a picture. I have walked down there before. And it's, it is quite stable. But uh, again, you're encroaching more into the water yard, which is not yeah. something that we normally like yeah. to support. Is there any way that you could do that without encroaching further into the water yard? Yeah. I just, I think that would be important to me. I think that getting more into the water yard is not what we want to see. We want to protect them from some waters and it is a <laughs> trout lake. I, I don't know how sensitive it is. It's at capacity and I know it's, you must give consideration for at capacity trout lakes. It doesn't mean you can't build on them or change things on them. You just have to give consideration. So I mean, it's a, it's using as much of the lot as possible, which is a concern for me when you're encroaching further into the water. <laughs> Councillor Cranston. Uh, I'd like to make a note, a motion to deny the application as it has been presented. Do I, <clears throat> do I have a seconder for that motion? Deputy Mayor Armstrong is a seconder. And if I could just add to it that have the client work with our staff, our client yep. staff, to meet the concerns or address the concerns that have been raised. Yeah. Okay. Our planning staff have had a meeting about this, but we're prepared to make another one if you would be able to, I think. Go ahead, Bill Arp. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I just would like to <clears throat> caution. I know Council's trying to find some sort of resolution, but if you're going to uh, deny this application, then the applicant will have to make a new application for what is going to be proposed <clears throat> by them if they choose to do that. So um, may I suggest a deferral and maybe give them a timeline in order to propose something that is in line with what you're requesting that it not get any closer than what's existing in the uh, water yard. Okay. And with the extra requirement that Councillor Franzen requested in terms of the engineering stability report. Just one question there, a point is, do you need the engineering stability support if you're not getting any closer to the water? What exists now exists. Just a question. Yeah. Yeah. But probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I think for me, if I was going to amend that, it would be defer it and have them come back to staff with a recommendation, a, a proposal that doesn't encroach any further into the water yard. I, I think. We want to protect the lakes. That's yep. what we're here for. I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure we do that. And encroaching further with a deck, I know it's not a big encroachment, but we don't want to start that. It's, I, I think personally, I don't want to start that. I think we're trying to save our lakes and do the best we can. Go ahead, Adele. Three, Mr. Mayor, and maybe we can ask the chief building official, Barb Waldron, that there may be a point when they pr provide their building plans, should they get approval to go ahead that the chief building official may ask for a stability port at that time, an engineered. Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Barb Walder, our CBO. As part of the building permit process, <clears throat> we deem that we need some engineering on footing design or supportive footing or whatever we would ask for at that okay. point. Okay, so that, thank, thank you very much. Barb Walder, our CBO, Director of Building and Planning. Okay. I, I'd be willing to amend my motion to, to the motion that's been recommended. So I'm going to defer <clears throat> and ask them to bring a proposal back to staff, work with staff to get a proposal that does not encroach in the water. Yeah. Okay. You have something on that one? Are you still prepared to second that? I am fine with that. Okay. Thank you. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? 
that motion has carried. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For that. Okay. I'm completely lost again because I moved my <laughs> pages around. Where did we go? There we go. Okay, we can move on to 10.4.2, which is Sarah Delamarter, our Google Planner. Can you speak to this file? Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. On today's agenda, we have a report from planning staff regarding the property known municipally as 43 Fire Route 212. The property owner has submitted an application to eliminate the holding provision on their lands. The purpose of the property owner's request is to facilitate the construction of the development approved by zoning bylaw amendment number 22-06. The holding provision required the property owner to fulfill a number of conditions prior to the development of the lands, which included the following three. One, a stage one and two archeological assessment. Two, a shoreline restoration plan prepared by a qualified professional. And three, a site plan agreement with the municipality of Trent Lakes. The property owner has fulfilled the conditions of the holding provision. The property owner has plans to develop the lot for residential purposes in accordance with the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw B2014-070 as amended. The notice of intention to pass a bylaw to remove the holding symbol was given in accordance with Section 36 of the Planning Act. This notice was circulated on July 19, 2023. The municipality has not received any comments from any of the circulated agencies or property owners at the time of grading this report. Staff are recommending the removal of the holding symbol from 43 Fire Route 212 in accordance with the official plan and zoning bylaw. The owner has entered into a site plan agreement with the municipality. If council is in agreement with the conclusions of the attached report and in the absence of any concerns by council, agencies or members of the public and all conditions of the removal of the hold being satisfied prior to this council meeting, it is recommended that a bylaw to lift the holding provision be approved, which is on today's council agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sarah Delamarter. Does any members of council have any questions? Seeing no questions, is anyone prepared to make a motion? Hey, Councilor Braybrook? Through your mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive the report and also that council support the approval of a bylaw to remove the holding symbol for 43 Fire Route 212. Okay, I have a motion to approve it. Do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? I am seeing none. I will call her the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. <clears throat> okay, we will move on to item 10.4.3 of our agenda, which is once again Sarah Delamarter, our junior planner. Can you speak to this file? Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. On today's agenda, we have a supplemental report from planning staff regarding zoning bylaw amendment number 23-04. Resolution R2023-192 was passed July 11th, 2023, the purpose of which was to address the concerns of a neighboring property owner who had concerns regarding the volume of water that travels through the existing culvert and how additional construction could, could contribute to more water flow. Agent Gary Bell, on behalf of Jeff Cheshire, has provided correspondence with the surveyor concerning the drainage, which is outlined in the attached email correspondence. The information was also circulated to the property owner, who originally brought up the concerns, and no additional comments have been received to date. As drainage is not an anticipated concern, and as mitigative measures will be enforced through an agreement to be registered on title, staff are recommending that the proposed rezoning application as a condition of provisional consent be approved. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sarah. Anyone have any questions? None. This seems like a reasonable course of action. Again, we've proved that there's not gonna be any more water going through there. Yeah substantially degrade the culvert or the surrounding area. Anyone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Braver? Uh, to you, Mayor, I make a motion that Council receive the report and also Council supports the bylaw to approve the rezoning application. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? Deputy Mayor Armstrong, any other conversation? I'm seeing no hands. 
I will call for the vote. All in favor? Motion has carried. Okay, we can move on to 10.4.4 of our agenda, which is with Al Arbor, our planner. Can you please speak to this file? Thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor, this report addresses the consolidation of a bylaw regulating and licensing of dogs and kennel operations in the municipality and including this bylaw under the AMPS program. Staff believe by adding this bylaw to our AMPS program, the tiered penalties will curb offenders and provide easier collection for non-payment of penalties, which will be applied directly to the tax roll of the property. It is anticipated that the AMPS will result in a higher recovery rate and garner compliance from property owners in a timely manner. Therefore, it's being recommended that Council receive the report from the Planner for Information, that Council support the consolidation of bylaws B 2018-079 and B 2019-120, known as the Animal Control Bylaw and amendments thereto to allow for enforcement through the administrative monetary penalty system and further that bylaw B 2023-01 being a bylaw to establish an administrative monetary penalty system be amended to include penalties for the animal control bylaw and further that the above reference bylaws are on today's council agenda for approval. Thank you very much Adele. Does anyone on council have any questions? I'm seeing no questions. That surprises me. Do I have anyone with the prayer to make a motion? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, I will make the motion that Council receive the report that we support the consolidation of those two bylaws. Um, that bylaw 2023 uh, be amended to include penalties for the animal control bylaw. And further, that the above reference bylaws. I don't need to say that, but <laughs> they're on today's uh, agenda later for approval. Okay, I, we have a motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? And Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much, Adele. We can move on now to 10.4.5 of our agenda, which is Adele Arbor, our junior planner. Can you please speak to this file? Yes, thank you. And through you, Mr. Mayor, this report was requested as a result of an MAF presented to Council, and I believe it was at the last meeting, wherein the applicant was, was requesting the creation of a new lot, which wasn't originally supported by municipal planning staff. After further discussion with the County of Peterborough planning staff regarding their practice in granting severances and the 15 year rule, municipal planning staff were subsequently able to support the request. The interpretation as outlined in the report is that up to two severances may occur in a land holding in a 15 year period. The County advises they have always interpreted eligibility dates to apply to each new consent as provided for the in the example in the report. Therefore, it's being recommended that this report be received for information purposes. Okay, does anyone have any comments or questions? I just have one, I need clarification. I, I read it, but it, so if I today sever a lot off of my property as, as, a, as a rate payer in Trent Lakes, and a year later, I decide to sever one more lot. I'm that is still eligible. Through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Okay. The eligibility dates in the very last paragraph yeah. of the report talks about um, the county has always interpreted the eligibility if you're allowed to have two consents within a 15 year period. So, mm -hmm. for instance, the example I used two severances were obtained at different at differing times from a retained parcel, say one in 2007, and then someone else applied in 2012, the retained parcel will become eligible for another severance after its 15 year mandatory wait period for each previous one. So the first one in 2007 would be eligible in 2022, and 2012 would be 2027. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other comments or questions? Anyone prepared to make a motion? 
Councilor Friend. I'd like to make a motion to receive for information. Okay, thank you very much. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councilor Braver for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you, Adele Arbor. We can move on to 10.4.6 of our agenda, which is Adele Arbor, our planner. Can you please speak to the file? Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. This report provides an update to the county official plan approval that is currently in progress. The county adopted the official plan on June 29, 2022, and it was subsequently forwarded to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing for approval. We have been advised that county staff have been meeting regularly with ministry staff to discuss the various bills that have been introduced along with several amendments approved at both the municipal and county levels, which require incorporation into the new official plan. On June 21st, 2023, the province posted notice for the approval of the county OP on the ERO, that being the Environmental Registry of Ontario. And the review period is 60 days, which municipalities or any person could provide review and comment. And this period ends on August 20th. Providing comments on the ERO is an opportunity to request modifications to the official plan. Of concern to um, county planning staff is the potential timing of the approval of the county OP and the introduction of the new provincial policy statement, which is intended to replace the current provincial policy statement and the growth plan. If the county OP is approved, before the new PPS, the county OP would be out of date and would require a major amendment. So the county has reached out to each of the municipalities asking uh, for support and they would like a council resolution. One, to defer the approval of the county OP until after the new PPS comes into effect. And secondly, that the minister modify the new county OP so that it's consistent with the new PPS. County Council on August sent on August 2nd supported Council's um, supported County staff's report and asked for a minor addition. And what they requested is that in the proposed PPS modifications, as they are being made by the ministry, that they be forwarded to County Council for review and support prior to the final approval of the minister. This is intended to provide an opportunity for discussion and any edits or modifications prior to its final approval. Therefore, it's being rec recommended or requested of Council that Council receive the report from the planner regarding the status of the draft official plan update for information. And further, that Council supports the County of Peterborough in their request to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing to defer approval of the new county official plan until after the new provincial planning statement comes into effect and that the minister subsequently modify and approve the official plan to be consistent with new provincial planning statement. And further, and I thought maybe we can add to that second um, recommendation that I am suggesting and we add what um, County Council approved that such modifications be forwarded to the county for review and comment prior to final approval and lastly that staff be directed to forward this report and Council's motion to the County of Peterborough and to the ERO posting as a formal response from the municipality related to the approval of the county official plan. Thank you very much Adele. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Center. Please help me out if I miss this. But no, this was a subject of quite considerable conversation uh, at County last Wednesday. And you're right, they did add that clause after much deliberation because we didn't want to leave it in the hands solely of the minister to make the changes to our official plan without <laughs> our involvement. So that's very important that that gets added. Um, a couple of things. This is unfortunate after all the work that's been done in trying to get an official plan that covers all the municipalities, uh, that we have another delay in all of this. However, it's really important. Uh, one of the things that I, two things I learned. Uh, one is that uh, we will be taken out of the greater growth plan for the greater horseshoe, which will allow for developments such as had been proposed and imploded 
in the past to actually move forward here. So that's a really positive change for us. And it would be great that, you know, once that's in place, that will be part of our, our operating plan. The other thing that I learned was that this new operations plan does not need to be uh, revised for 10 years. The previous ones had to be done for five years. So waiting another five or six months to uh, get it right and get it consistent with the changes in the other legislation just simply makes sense to me. Um, and so that we don't have to redo it again. So uh, I don't know if we're going to make a motion or just, just more comments. Any, anybody more comments? Any other comments from council? want to reiterate what Deputy Mayor Armstrong said. I mean, it was a much deliberation, but we don't want the minister to just go ahead and carve blanc and change our official plan without some consulting period. So that's what, when they bring it back to us in draft, County Council will go through it. I'm sure we'll share that with, with Trent Lake's staff and we can make sure that we have the best amalgamated piece because the Greater Golden Horseshoe Growth Plan will be taken out of our hands and will be into the provincial policy statement which will include some aspects of the growth plan is just items in there. So I think it's important that we have a chance to make any modifications, send it back to the ministry. So I think it's important to do this the right way, not the fastest way. Okay. Any other comments? If we can go back to Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a moment. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Lamson. Uh, yes, so I would make the motion that we receive the report, that we support the County of Peterborough in their request. Uh, and uh, that the minister modify and approve the official plan with the draft recommendations being sent back to you have the wording better than I do. The only other thing I would add is that we copy Dave Smith on this. Do I have a seconder for that motion? The Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? motion has carried. Thank you very much Adele for your report. Okay, we can now move on to 10.4.7 of our agenda. And Barbara Walder, our Director of Building and Planning and CBO, could you please speak to this slide? Through you, Mayor Lamson. <clears throat> so the purpose of this report was to provide Council with information regarding Buckhorn Lake Estates. The purpose was not to go into the depth into the subdivision agreement, but to focus on the agreement in place. This agreement expires December 31st, 2026. <clears throat> the agreement purpose was to allow Buckhorn Lake Estates Association to be in care and control of Block E through the statement of, and whereas the municipality agrees to permit the association to develop, use, and otherwise manage the said Block E for the common benefit of the owners of properties within the said subdivision agreement. Prince Severn Waterway is another important item to recognize. And in this particular case, in 2019, Trent Severn Waterway limited the docks to 26 to 30. If council wishes to review this agreement, it would be a 2024 work item at the earliest, but it would be better to review in 2025 prior to the renewal of the agreement to have all the comments from all parties and agencies. Thank you very much, Barb. Anyone have any comments, any comments or questions? Go ahead, Councillor Franz. I have a question. Can we not sell that piece of property to the Buckhorn Group and, and and not have to deal with this uh, every ten years? Not sure. Who would like to respond to that? <laughs> I think just my perspective is that's part of that whole subdivision agreement at Block E, correct? And so it, uh, you need to do some rewriting of a lot of things. That's just my own perspective. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. oh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, just a uh, case in point that at Picard Lake, we had a block like that as well, and it was sold. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it is pretty easily doable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, in other words, when uh, the property belongs to the Paris Garden Association, <clears throat> where we have the dock and, and we have it on two different locations, yeah. plus the, the park. Interesting. I don't know if we have a plan for that. I, I do appreciate that you highlighted some of the 
yeah. wording enough for us to concentrate on. But thank you very much for that. Yeah. I mean, we have a plan in effect till I believe it's 2026. So I mean, it's a couple of years away, or at least. Yeah. I don't know. From my own perspective, I would stay with the plan we have and amend that appropriately when that time comes. But I can't make a motion. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, let me try to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor Lamb said. Um, so a motion to receive the report um, to support the staff uh, recommendation uh, to leave the current agreement with Buckhorn Lake Estates Community Association status quo and to, uh, can I say, advise Mr. Borges to uh, address the situation with the Community Association. Anything else? Anything more to that? Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councilor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, we can move on to item 10.5 of our agenda, which is finance. Tom McTaggart, our CIA treasurer, CIO treasurer, can you speak to file 10.5.1? Thank you. Thank you, and through you. Before you, for information, is accounts payable for June and July of 2023? Okay, does anyone on council have any questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, through Deputy Mayor. Um, just a question that I asked you, uh, Donna, earlier. On page 120 of our agenda, uh, there are five invoices from Cambium for AMP, which I know is not administrative monetary policy <laughs> or penalty. So could you share with us what that is for? It's about $18,000 in total. Thank you and through you. That is the amount paid to Cambium for monitoring the closed landfills, which is a requirement. So it's the annual monitoring program. Great. <laughs> Way too many acronyms. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you very you. much for the clarification. Thank you for the questions. Any other questions regarding this one? Seeing no hands, is anyone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Braver, go ahead. Through your mayor, I'd like to make a motion that Councillor receive the report. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Let's see Councillor Franzen for a seconder. I have any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Donna Taggart. Okay, we can move on to administration, which is 10.6 of our agenda. And we can go to 10.6.1. Rachel Stark, our economic development and marketing coordinator. Would you like to speak to this file? Thank you, and through you. Uh, before you is a report regarding a nonprofit meetings and council chambers policy. Staff and council were approached by a resident at the May 2nd council meeting to request the consideration of allowing public meetings for nonprofit groups to take place in the municipal office building. As there are no policies currently in place that address this topic, staff are directed to create a policy for this, which would include certain criteria. The draft policy was created and is attached to this report. The recommendation is that council receive the report and further that council approve the nonprofit meetings in council chambers policy. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Rachel. Does anyone have any questions? I am seeing none. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? I'm seeing none. Okay, Councillor Braver, go ahead. Through your mayor, uh, make a motion that council receive the report. <clears throat> the council approve the nonprofit meetings and council chambers policy. Do I have a seconder for that motion? See Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor, that motion has carried. Thank you very much, Rachel. Okay, we can move on to 10.6.2 of our agenda, which is Rachel Stark, our Economic Development and Marketing Coordinator. Would you like to speak to this file? Please. Thank you, and through you. Uh, before you is a report, report regarding the draft internal communication strategy. As after it was reviewed by staff, the draft strategy was brought forward to council at the June 20th meeting with a request to receive comments from council by July 7th. 
No changes were requested, therefore no changes have been made to the draft strategy since the last meeting. Staff are now looking for approval of the internal communication strategy in order to begin implementing the goals. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Rachel. Does anyone have any questions or comments? I am seeing none. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lamsheim. Uh, motion to receive the report and to approve the internal communication strategy. Thank you very much. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Councilor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Rachel. Okay, we can move on to item 10.6.3 of our agenda, which is Donna Taggart, our CAO treasurer. Can you speak to this panel? Thank you, and through you. So before you is the Q2 reporting for 2023. Uh, you will see that departments continue to be busy. Uh, I did just want to bring a few highlights just in order of the report. Uh, there was the completion of the council strategic plan during Q2. An updated grant policy with a matrix was adopted by council. There was the hiring of a third party after hours by law enforcement agency and the implementation of cloud permit planning module. Uh, there was a major project undertaken by our corporate services department where they inventoried and organized building permits. Uh, the creation of the internal communications plan. You will note the report shows that there has been a leveling off of building and planning permits and applications, which is consistent with other county lower tiers and also is a province-wide finding according to MPAC. The Fire and Emergency Services Department hired 13 new firefighters and they have started training and four of our existing firefighters have now completed the firefighter one and two training through the Eastern Ontario Fire Academy. There were 308 tons of garbage received by our transfer station staff, which is fairly consistent to 2022. A cleanup of the roadways on for Earth Day on 20 municipal roads, which resulted in 42 bags of garbage being collected. 116 work orders completed by recreation and facility staff, and there was the installation of self-watering planters and hanging baskets throughout Buckhorn. So we do have staff from most departments here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, so just for okay. council information. Thank you very much, Don. Does anyone have any questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Mayor Lamson. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, staff. This is a has been a work in progress, and it is now really a very excellent report that's not done by many municipalities so appreciate that and I think it's really excellent for you to take the time to go through the highlights so I'd like to see that in future uh, presentations I think it's important that you point out to us some of the key messages from it so thank you thank you thank you very much any other comments or questions I'm seeing none I just have a comment it's very much like Deputy Mayor Armstrong's it's nice to have all that one place one time three or four times a year, gives you a chance to see where we're going, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And I think we're, we're in a good direction. I think it's great that we have a good chance to support our staff. Thank you very much for that. Okay, Thank you. Anyone prepared to make a motion? Go ahead, Councillor Franzen. A motion to receive. A motion to receive. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, we can move on to item 10.7.1 or 10.7, which is corporate services. So we can go to 10.7.1, which is Jesse Clark, our Director of Corporate Services. First, can you please speak to this file? Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lambshead, at the May 17, 2022 Council meeting, Council approved the stop up, closure, and sale of a portion of an unopened road allowance. Parts 1, 2, 3, and 4 on Plan 45R17498 will be sold to Rose Roseanne Biles, subject to the necessary easements over part two and three for the neighbor to the south. And part five will be sold to Jim Bush Shard to serve as lot additions for their respective properties. The total appraised value of the land is $37,000. Uh, there's a bylaw on today's agenda to stop up, close and transfer this unopened uh, road allowance for council's consideration. And staff are recommending that council receive the report, authorize the transfer, um, of the unopened road allowance, approve the purchase price for the sale of the unopened road allowance, 
and authorize the mayor and clerk to execute any documents that may be necessary to affect the sale of a subject property. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse. Is there any questions about this one? I am seeing none. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Councilor Brief, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mayor, make a motion to receive the report and also that Council authorize the transfer of the portion of the unopened road allowance as specified and that Council approve the purchase price for the sale of the unopened road allowance. Uh, as stated, and that council authorize uh, the mayor and the clerk to execute any documents that may be necessary to affect the sale of the subject property. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Braybrook. Anyone else, anyone prepared to second that motion? And that would be Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a second. Okay, any other conversation? I just have one little comment. Nice to see that the value of a road allowance is not eleven hundred dollars anymore. It's thirty seven thousand. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the appraisals. Okay. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much, Jesse Clark. Okay, we can move on to item eleven of our agenda, which is correspondence for information. We can pull anyone out you'd like to speak to, or we can receive them all in one motion. Anyone prepared to make a motion? Go ahead. A motion to receive all uh, uh, correspondence for information. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion? The Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? If none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much. Okay, we can move on to item follower agenda, which is correspondence <clears throat> for action. Again, we can do them all at once, or we can speak about them individually. It's entirely a decision of council. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. I thank you, Mayor Lamb. I'd like to pull out 12.2 and 12.5, please. Okay. I would entertain a motion to do the rest of them in one motion, if that's the only ones we want to pull out. Anyone prepared to make? Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. I will make a motion to uh, accept or receive all of the other items under correspondence of action. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? We'll call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Now we can go to item 12.2 of our agenda and speak to that item. Does anyone like to speak? Yes, through you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to um, just wanted to thank. Uh, the mayor and council uh, providing this uh, this letter to the uh, Peterborough OPP detachment uh, in support of their uh, application for the bail reform uh, and warrant apprehension grant. Uh, as a co-chair of the uh, Trent Lakes uh, Police Services Board, uh, uh, it's important. Uh, it, it would assist uh, and would benefit our municipality as well as the other municipalities within the uh, within the county. Okay, thank you for your comments. Any other questions or comments? Go I have a comment. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, uh, if, if it's going to make bail more difficult to get for people that have been charged with crimes that are innocent until proven guilty, I have a real problem with that. Well, what I can mention, uh, if I may, um, sure, go ahead. Sure. Sorry, through you, Mayor. Um, I think any grant monies, any support is is going to uh, most likely go to operational. Um, as far as um, developing any sort of units uh, that are monitoring people that are out on bail, okay, and, and that sort of thing, it's not necessarily. Um, uh, it's more of a support, okay. uh, operational support. Okay. And I know uh, when I was uh, in my previous life, in my previous work life, uh, we did have uh, a bill unit, uh, that sort of thing. And then, uh, you know, cutbacks and whatnot, and those bail units were, mm -hmm. were disbanded and whatnot. And there is, a, there is an identified need, just, I mean, everybody, if you're watching the news, there is an identified need to to bring these units back in. And it, it just takes, takes some of the work uh, 
uh, away from the uh, frontline officers that are responding, responsible for responding to uh, other uh, emergent calls. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead, Councilor Cranston. Uh, uh, thank you, Councilor Raybook, for the. I, I misunderstood what the, the letter was uh, supporting. I thought it was supporting uh, reviewing the, the bail. But uh, by the monitoring program, I certainly would support that. Yeah, through you, Mayor, just uh, further clarification. Um, through the Ontario Association of Police Services Board, there was uh, correspondence sent out um, for input from the membership from the Ontario Association of Police Services, the OAPSB, um, looking for recommendations. There were recommendations from the Solicitor General as far as um, adjustments to the uh, the bail reform, uh, the bail program. Uh, and that includes um, further training for uh, justices of the peace uh, to further educate them on, on uh, you know, uh, the releases and whatnot and, and who should be released and who shouldn't be released and, and more uh, emphasis put on uh, offenders that uh, are prone for, to uh, recidivism. So and it's it's that sort of thing. So, but I, I know what you're saying. But it, there was there was an actual more of a global uh, effort to address uh, you know the, the violent offenders that are that are re, you know repeat offenders. And, yep. And you know, there should have been more more control over them, so to speak. One one last comment. Sure. One, one of my major around. concerns about bail is people that can't afford to uh, bail and are languishing in prison and may may not uh, be guilty of the crime that they were charged with right this three years ago yeah, yeah. yeah this is I, I mean it's it's more concentrated it's not it's not a big net to try to capture every person that's uh that's trying to obtain bail they they yeah. have to go through a process uh any any offender that's uh trying to get out of bail they they have to go through a judicial process uh it's it's called what's known as the show cause show mm -hmm. cause why you should be released mm -hmm. and there's different I mean, we get into the minutia of it but oh, yeah. but generally um you know if an offender if it's if it's a minor offense uh, and it's it's not a violent offense that's not the spirit of this uh, the spirit is uh, violent offenders mm -hmm. um and then what's um what's prompted this whole uh discussion mm -hmm. and and um and process is the fact that there are violent offenders that are being released and they're recommitting violent offenses mm -hmm. uh, shootings and whatnot so yeah. so it's to, to gain more uh, or gain more control over over the process of, of release and that's it or regain the control of it so okay thank you very much comes from go ahead and deputy mayor armstrong uh, a motion to support um 12.2 with appreciation to the fact that we have some expertise on yes. the council in that area. Thank you very much for that caveat. Do I have a second for that motion? Thank you very much, Councillor Raver, for a seconder. I will call for any other conversation. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay, we can move on to 12.5 of that section which is, and would someone like to speak to that? So 12.5 is another attempt <clears throat> at trying to get the province to impose some kind of regulatory framework over short-term rentals. And so I think the, the more times and ways that we can um, put our voice uh, behind that and our support, we should. So motion to support. Thank you very much for that motion, and I'm not looking for a seconder because I would like to second that myself. Okay, any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Okay, now we can move on to item 13 of our agenda, which is bylaws. And we can go to section 13.1 bylaws on the agenda memorandum. And Jesse Clark, our tech clerk, would you like to speak to this file? 
Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lampett, there were two bylaws on today's agenda that were not part of a public meeting or had a corresponding staff report. The first is B2023-68, which is a bylaw to authorize the execution of a merger agreement or to fulfill a condition of consent related to file B2822. And B2023-69 is a bylaw to authorize uh, individuals assigned by Maxima Protection as municipal law enforcement officers for Trent Lakes. Okay. Thank you very much for that update. Now we could go through all these in one motion, or we can do them one at a time. It's entirely up to council's decision. So Councillor Armstrong, or Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, I would propose a motion to approve all of the bylaws on the agenda. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. I think that's the first time we actually successfully did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we can move on to item 14, which is business arising, business arising out of a previous meeting. Does anyone have any business arising out of a previous meeting? Actually, none. Item 15 is a notice of motion. Does anyone have a notice of motion? Seeing none. We can move on to item 16 of our agenda, which is information items. Does anyone have any other information to share? Seeing none, we can move on to item 17, which is our closed meeting. I would entertain a motion to go into closed. I'd like to ask for a five minute break before we go into Before closed. we go to close? Okay. We can go into closed and, and then take the okay. Let's yep. go okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Anyone prepared to make a motion to go into closed? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a mover and a seconder is Councillor Franzen. We are going to go into closed for the Ontario, Ontario, Ontario Municipal Act, Section 239.2, to discuss litigation, potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, duty, statements of claim, zoning bylaw compliance, and F which is advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, duty statements of claim and zoning bylaw compliance. I will now call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We are enclosed. We can move on to 17.2 on our agenda and I would entertain a motion to rise from close. Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a mover. Councillor Franzen for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor. That motion is carried. We are out of closed. We can move on to item 18 of our agenda, which is business arising out of our from our closed session. We can move on to 18.1, which is the adoption of the minutes from our closed session. Anyone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Braber for a mover. Councillor Franzen for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor. That motion is carried. We have adopted the minutes from our closed session. We can move on to item 19, which is the adoption of the confirming bylaw. I would entertain a motion for the same. I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a mover and Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We can move on to item 20 of our agenda, which is adjournment. Does anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I see Councillor Franzen for a mover. I see Councillor Braber for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.